Hello everyone, I'm the Whiskey Enthusiast, welcome back to my channel. Today I am changing studios. Uh, I've been challenged by Jeff from G Whiskey for doing the one whiskey for life challenge. And um, never to back down from one a challenge. I was in the middle of my holiday, but uh, I figured I have to do it, otherwise it's just gonna go way too long before I get into it. So uh, I'm taking time off from my uh, regular schedule of holidaying and uh, shooting this video. My family is delighted. They send their regards, Jeff. Anyway, so the premise is you have one whiskey for life. I don't know if the situation is you go to, you get shipwrecked on an island and you find cases of cases of cases of the same whiskey. I don't know if it's a uh, mischievous genie who plays uh, a little bit of a trick on you. You get infinite whiskey, but it's the same. Whatever that weird situation is you found yourself in, you're going to have to drink one whiskey for the rest of your life. And what whiskey would that be? It's a very hard question because uh, I think uh, every one of us can uh, say that uh, it's a mood thing, isn't it, whiskey? We always have uh, different moods and we want different whiskeys for different moods. But I think uh, it's just this video is for this part of my journey, this time, what I would like to have uh, for the rest of my life. I think if I do this video next year or if I did it last year, it would have been different. So. Without uh, making too much more rambling on and uh, too much conversation, I'll get on to the video. And if I say what whiskey it is, it will be, what is it, two minute video, which there's no point to it. So I'm just gonna list some runners up, eh, you know, for content. And as true to the form, and if I'm, you know, ch being challenged by Jeff, I'm taking a page from his book and I have a mystery dram here. Uh, if you stick around till the end, I will share with you what it is and how I feel about it. Right, okay. Before we... Um, what else? Yes, let's dive in. Let's dive in. Okay, so one whiskey for life. That's really hard. But uh, we can, I think, play around with it. I think it has to be a cast strength whiskey. Why? So we have a lot of leg room to find different flavors. If we get bored, we just chug it and we want to get pissed on that island or wherever we are. Or we play around, we spend infinite hours to uh, get the right nuances, get the amount of drops, mLs, whatever. So I think cast strength, it has to be cast strength. I thought about age and um, I don't know. I don't know if there's a sweet... I like young whiskey and I like old whiskey. So it's... I don't know if there's a definite answer to that. I didn't want to go after unicorns or, you know, independent bottling, single cask, which wouldn't work anyway. This is a list from whiskeys you can actually find. That's why I've eliminated any uh, Campbelltown, apart from Glen Scotia, but uh, any Campbelltown... Oops. Uh, any Campbelltown products because um, you can't really find them. You know, Springbank 12, 12 cast strength. Even though I don't think I would like to drink it every day, you still can't find it. Right, again, rambling on. I have to get back to the runners up. So, I had two PT things that come to my mind. I know one of them is not cast strength. We have Lafroy Lore here. I absolutely love that video. Um, uh, whiskey. I did a video of it. I'll put the link up there, but I absolutely love that whiskey. It's so full of flavor. It's uh, an incredible example of an unhinged Laphroaig, even more than uh, Laphroaig Tan Cast Strength, in my opinion. I just love the flavors there. But the peat would be too tiring. You can't get around it. Uh, peat doesn't dilute. I mean, you can dilute it, but the peat's still there. It might be tiring. Same as Lechate 9 Bordeaux cask strength uh, Bordeaux matured whiskey. Now I did a review of it, it's not up yet, it will be, um, but it's a fantastic whiskey. It's it's a limited release but you can still find it either from their website or you know uh, online retailers. It's fully matured in Bordeaux. Uh, red wine cask is Lechec, nine-year-old cask strength. It's uh, what Lechec does at its best. If you like Lechec Rioja, you're gonna love the nine Bordeaux. So we eliminated the uh, PT ones. Then I went a bit left field. I took a page from other Jeff, Slappity Slap Jeff Whiskey, 
uh, and went through the road of Cotswolds, which I love. I think they do amazing stuff. And the founder's choice from Cotswolds is a cast strength, fully SDR matured, three-year-old whiskey. Why I didn't want to go with that is, uh, it's the age. I think it's a bit too young to give you any more nuances than you would want. After a while, I think it'll get boring. And I think SDR could uh, feel a bit same, same after a while. I don't think you'll get enough nuances, no matter how many water drops that's you put in there. So that's why I eliminated that one. I was thinking of a of the Singleton 17 cast rank uh, Diageo 2020 special release, which is fantastic whiskey, by the way. It's more distillate driven because it's refilled bourbon barrels for 17 years. But the problem with that one is uh, the Singleton distillate is not very exciting. It's a bit monotonous and um, it just it's a bit same same. So I think that would get boring as well. Then, of course, there are other things you could talk about Van Romax, but are you talking about old Van Romax cast strength 10 or the new one? Which version you're going to get? It's just there are so many, so many options. Uh, another another option was a Bladnock 10 cast strength, but I've not tried that. I would love to. I think I could be swayed to go with Bladnock 10 cast strength if I actually tried it, but I haven't, so I'm not going to act like I know how it tastes so that's out of the picture so after a lot of thinking that left me with two choices choice number one is Glen Scotia Victoriana fantastic whiskey uh, I think it was uh, the whiskey of the year two years ago at Oswas or maybe last year I'm not so sure but brilliant brilliant whiskey I've not tried the new version I absolutely love the old one with the old old bottling that's why I put the uh, image there as the old one it's uh, it's really full of flavor uh, maritime but also malty a bit funky a bit smoky I think it gives a lot to you for what it is uh, it's climbing up the prices because I think it's getting scarcer now to find but back in the day it was a really big steal and my other option is the Aaron Bothy, the quarter cask. Uh, it's about nine years of age. Both of them are non-age statement, by the way. Glen Scotia, we don't know that well, uh, or I don't know that well. So if you know any more information than I do, please share. But the Aaron Bothy is around nine, nine and a half years old. It's matured in quarter casks. So you get more wood interaction. And I just love the Aaron spirit. Uh, I think it's a fantastic island whiskey. You get a lot of maritime notes, but you get a little bit of funk there, a little bit of a lactic note there, a little bit of sulfur. Uh, it has a unique character. I do enjoy it. Uh, both at cast strength, I think both would work. But for me, right now, in my journey, I'm gonna have to go with the quarter cask. I absolutely adore that whiskey. Uh, I know maybe people would have said, yelling right now, saying that, what, when Victorian is there, how can you pick it? But I absolutely love the Bothy. I like to play around with it with water or I just drink it neat. It's, it's a brilliant whiskey. I think why the Glen Scotia lost is that it has a little bit of a char note, an extra char note, which can get a bit tiring after a while. Whereas the Bothy just gives the best interaction between nice strong youngish or matureish depends on where you look from spirit and nice woodwork i really really enjoy that so that's my one whiskey uh, for life right now come check me next year maybe it'll change but aaron bothy is my pick now uh mystery dram is keeping up with the spirit is this lag aaron's sister distillery produced its first official bottling. It had its inaugural releases, but this is, they're going to be core range. This is called the Kilmery edition, 100% ex bourbon barrels, non-chill filtered, natural color, bottled at 46% ABV. It's a heavily peated Aaron malt produced at the sister distillery at Lag. And on the nose, you get the meaty notes of peat, but also nice zesty lemony, lemon rinds, fresh herbal notes, eucalyptus mint. Less peaty art baggy, but 
there is a hint of cardboard, wet cardboard note with a little bit of a lactic note you normally get from Aaron, which is weird, complete different stills, complete other end of the island, but still you kind of feel the um, character. Now I'm gonna do a separate review of the lag with its new make and I'm gonna compare it to a uh, Macri Moor, the peated version of Aaron produced in uh, Lohranza Distillery where Aaron is made. So let's see how that plays out. But right now I'm really enjoying this dram. It's just got released. So if you haven't tried and if you like PT whiskeys, I highly recommend it. Mm. Really nice, zesty, fresh peat. It goes very smoothly in summer times. Now, I need to uh, nominate someone else. I need to challenge someone else by the end of this video. So I am thanking Jeff from G Whiskey for this challenge and I am challenging Wade from McIntyre's Malts. Now, Wade uh, has a fantastic channel. He is uh, getting more and more whiskey these days. I can see his cabinet filling. So uh, he's doing more and more uh, reviews and great reviews with nice editing. I really like his style and you can really feel the passion. So I think he's gonna do this one a big, big, big justice. So Wade, brother, it's up to you. Let's see what you bring. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, in this impromptu place. So I'm gonna go back to uh, whatever I was doing. There's an annoying little fly. And uh, I'll leave you with uh, my choice. Hopefully you're not so uh, upset with it. And uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments, what would your pick be of one whiskey for the rest of your life at this point in your life and if you like this below, uh, video please hit the like button below and uh, if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel it does mean a lot to me and i'll see you guys on the next one till then slanger